Hi everyone, welcome back. Now, if you clicked on this video, then you're probably someone that struggles with wrist positions in the backswing. So I think this video will be very interesting for a lot of you just because there's many different ways on how to manipulate wrist conditions. But for the most part, I think a lot of people have the idea that you have to have your lead wrist flat in order to keep the club face more closed or square at the top. So it is also very important to understand that even though I'll be sharing some ways to keep your lead wrist flatter, that your club face still remains fairly square. Now, I think I mentioned this briefly in previous videos, but anytime I talk about the wrist conditions, um, it can be a very touchy subject just because it's really determined by how the player grips the club, what their certain swing patterns are like in the backswing and in the downswing. But if you know your swing very, very well, and you know that you need to have more of a flat lead wrist at the top, then I'm gonna share three ways that's gonna make it possible. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to see more golf related content in the future. And one other thing, I was contacted by a company called Athlons and they sent me some really cool shoes. Um, here it is, kind of the side view, right? Kind of go to the front a little bit, other side, the back, okay? Really, really good looking shoe and here's the bottom in case you're wondering. Basically the idea behind the shoe is that the soles are kind of designed in a way to help you keep the weighting in the inside of your feet. So it makes it very difficult or discourages you from actually moving your weight too much um, to your trail side or kind of away from the ball. So if you guys are interested, you can go to the website. I'll leave the link to the website in my description box and you can use the code JKM20 um, to get a discount. Give that a look and back to the video. So anything to do with the wrist, I usually like to start off with the grip just because the way that you hold the club can greatly affect the range of motion in your hands and how you're gonna manipulate the club throughout the swing. Okay, so when it comes to the grip, I'm just going to go over a few points just with both hands, kind of the lead hand and the right hand and how you position it on the club, um, just to go over how it may influence your ability to keep the lead wrist flat while keeping the club face square. So first things first is with the lead hand. So now when you're putting your lead hand on the handle, it's just important to be aware of how strong versus how weak uh, your grip is. So for those of you who don't know, uh, a weak grip is when, um, for a right-handed player, the left hand is kind of turned more to the left on the handle. So the back of my lead hand would face uh, more towards the target, uh, where a stronger grip is when the left hand or the lead hand is turned more to the right on the handle. So now you can see from the camera view, the, the back of the lead hand faces more uh, at you guys. Players who have a very weak lead hand on the handle suffer from basically two things when um, when they try to influence their, their wrist conditions at the top. So the first is that they struggle with keeping the club face square because obviously the weaker the lead hand gets, um, when they try to keep their lead, lead wrist kind of just flat like that, um, the toe of the club points more towards the ground, uh, which means that the club face is very, very open. Okay, now um, in order to compensate for that, these players have to bow their lead wrist or flex their lead wrist a lot more in order for them to keep the club face more closed or square at the top. But in doing so, they have this overwhelming uncomfortableness um, or feeling of weakness in the hands um, that they can't quite get over. So in order to avoid that feeling of weakness um, in the lead wrist, um, they tend to go back more into extension or they cuff the lead wrist um, in order to feel like they have more control over the club um, and, and they feel a bit stronger. But in doing so, again, they're just making the club face a lot more open at the top. So to avoid that, um, you would want your lead wrist to be just strong enough. So you don't want it to be really, really strong to where the lead wrist is very, very much on top. It's just strong enough just to where when you do try to keep your lead wrist flatter, that your wrists don't quite have to work as hard. Um, but if your wrists do get flat, then the, the kind of leading edge of the club is more in line with your wrist. So the, the toe of the club is not pointing so much towards the ground. Uh, and that would mean that the club face is more closed and, and more square. Now, the second point I want to make is how you're positioning your trail hand uh, on the grip. So very similar to the lead hand, the uh, weaker you make your right hand, so that would be more like on top of the handle. Uh, again, it's going to make it very, very difficult um, for your lead wrist to get flatter. So you can give this a try at home, but just keeping your lead wrist in the same position, if you get your right hand and put it to, the, to a, a bit of an extreme position, kind of in a weak or more, very, very much on top like this, and you just try your best to get your lead wrist 
as flexed as possible or flat, as flat as possible, okay, you'll find it's very, very difficult. You'll feel a very uncomfortableness um, in the inside of your trail at wrist, okay? So it's a very limiting um, position for your hands. So the only way that your, your wrist can move is, is kind of into more extension for both wrists in order for it to, to feel comfortable. It's important to understand that with your trail hand, the more the stronger you make it or the more kind of underneath you put your, your, your hand, the easier it will be for you to get more flex into the lead wrist or for your lead wrist to get flatter. Okay, so the second thing I want to talk to you guys about that will help you um, get this lead wrist more flat um, at the top of the swing is to just pay attention to how much of a hinge um, you have throughout the backswing. If you were to just look at the lead wrist, okay, now when I just, you know, move my, my wrist straight up and down like this, um, just keeping my lead wrist flat, Okay, you'll, you'll notice that there's only a certain amount of range of motion I have when I try to get my wrist to come up like that. Um, there's just a bone here that prevents my wrist from, from going any further. So if I want to um, go further than this, then what I'll have to do after this point is to add more extension like this or cut my lead wrist more. So if I put a club on my hands and I make a backswing, when I hinge the club up, the maximum amount of hinge that I can apply to my wrist is just up to here, okay? My, my lead wrist cannot go into any more um, uh, radial deviation, okay, if you want to say it that way, um, beyond this point, okay? So if I want to make the angle between my lead arm and the shaft sharper, the only way for me to do that is to add more cupping or extension to the lead wrist, okay? So that's the mistake a lot of people make and, and why it's so difficult for them um, to keep the lead wrist flat. I would say this is the most common reason um, as to why it's so difficult for a lot of people. So um, instead of trying to creep a very sharp angle, I'd want people to get um, a wider angle between the lead arm and the shaft. So you'll have to feel more of a ulnar deviation um, in the wrist at the top. Okay. Now again, as, a, as another experiment, you can try to keep your lead arm and the club almost kind of in a straight line throughout the backswing. And just pay attention to your lead wrist. It's, it, sh it should feel very easy for your lead wrist to feel more flexed or bowed, okay? But as soon as you try to make the angle between the lead arm and the shaft sharper and sharper, um, after a certain point, you have to add extension. Otherwise, you can't go, um, you can't make this angle very sharp, all right? So um, that's, that's another really important one that not a lot of people think about. So you can give that a try. Uh, and, and it should help you a lot. And finally, the third thing to pay attention to is just how you're taking the club back to start. Most commonly, I see players really open up the club face, okay? And in doing so, they're, the way that they're rotating their forearms is so that their trail forearm kind of rolls underneath the lead forearm, okay? And when you do that, and when you open up the, the club face, the more and more your, your lead wrist will move into extension or more of a cupped position, kind of like this, okay? So if you are a player that does really, really open up the face and get the arms rotated this way, then in order for you to get the club face square, it may feel as though you're turning the club face more downwards um, as you make the backswing, okay? So even though it'll feel like you're turning the face more closed or hooding the face as you take it back, um, you probably won't be doing that in real life. You'll probably be just getting the club face um, kind of close to where it needs to be. And in feeling that, you're going to be adding more flex to the lead wrist, um, which will make it easier to get your or to get your lead wrist flat at the top. Okay, so these were the three things that uh, will help you get your lead wrist more flat at the top. So I hope you guys can take this information or these ideas uh, and apply them to your swing and let me know what you guys think. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video helps you guys. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment. And be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss if you want to inquire about online lessons. I will also leave a link to my website in the description box below as well. Take care.